Cool. Well, those of you that are here with us, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I do want to let you know we're doing an experiment today. So we are sharing the audio from our webinar through Clubhouse. We got some people hopping into the room here, uh, joining us uh, on the audio side of things. We appreciate all of you being here with us today. Um, we're going to basically, I'm, I'm just going to kind of chime into the Clubhouse room every 15 minutes or so, letting them know what they're doing, because people do tend to come and go um, from those rooms. But obviously, for those of you that are here on our live webinar version of this, uh, we're doing things just like normal. So you're going to see a really awesome presentation. We've got the five easiest video formats that get the most engagement for you. Um, what we're going to be trying to do today is to give you video styles, video formats, sort of video uh, templates that you can use on a consistent basis that are really simple to make. And we also have seen and, and sort of from evidence can say, uh, get a lot of engagement, right? They get a lot of views, they get a lot of likes, they get a lot of comments. Comments are the gold standard. You definitely want comments. That's what's going to push your video further than anything else. Um, we're going to try to give you five formats that, that you can use in your business. So are we uh, ready to get, get rolling here? I was born ready. Let's right. go. Oh, well, apparently I'm having some trouble uh, connecting to Clubhouse. So Vanessa, if you behind the scenes want to see if you can maybe sort that out, but we're going to get running here. So I apologize for that. There you All are. right, folks. You're on, Nick. You're on Clubhouse. You, you got me? Okay. Yourself. Well, just, yeah, it just downsized on me. So according to my app, I'm not actually on it, but, uh, you know, I'm going to blame it on iPhones. It's, it's the pro it's an iPhone problem. That's what this is. Oh yeah. Blame it on the iPhone. Blame it on. <laughs> Anyway, I got it. We got to run with the with the roll the roll with the webinar. So Vanessa, if you could maybe get that sorted on your end, then great. Otherwise, this was a failed experiment. All right. Well, before we get into it, just take a look at the screen here, folks. We like to always mention this uh, at least once during our webinars, and that is uh, that we have free video lessons available. So if you're just getting into learning to utilize business in your video in your business, um, or if you're trying to take things to the next level and you just want some free awesome advice here. Here's how you get our free video lessons. You need to send a text message and the text message should just be L-E-A-R-N-V-I-D-E-O, no spaces, don't include your name, don't send anything else, just send that as the body of the text. And the phone number you send it to is 44222, right? So super easy, go into your text message app right now, type out 44222 is the phone number, and then we will get, uh, and then send the text learn video uh, just all one word. Now I'm getting some feedback on the other phone. You're going to be getting feedback no matter what, because you got I guess so. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So, all right, we're going to get rolling. We got a lot to cover here today. So number one, the number one kind of video that you can get started with is a talking head listicle video, right? So that's actually sort of a combination of two different concepts of videos. So I want to kind of explain this a little bit to you. So first of all, what is a listicle video? Uh, it's a fun word, right? But listicle video is, it's actually a term that comes from blogging. So this was something that was popular in blogging four or five years ago is a sort of a very buzzy headline. You'd see like the whole, you know, five things to X, Y, Z, right? Or five ways to do this thing. Um, they, they died off in blogging popularity, but they're a super effective video format. And the reason I love this kind of video is that it is an incredibly easy piece of content to make. So the, that's the listicle part. What's the talking head part? Well, the talking head part is literally what you see us doing right now, where you see somebody just talking into a camera. That's called a talking head video, right? So a lot of uh, you know TV news broadcasts, that's sort of talking head style. It's super easy, right? All you have to do is set your camera up on a tripod or prop it up in front of you, or you can use your webcam and you just talk to the camera. And so it's probably one of the easiest formats of video you can possibly make. Even if you don't have a tripod, you can just hold your phone up and that works too. And so again, we're trying to give you really simple formats here. The reason that the listicle format works so well is that you don't have to develop much of an idea, right? So all I have to do is I have to come up with, with a general topic, right? So let's just say, um, we wanted to talk about, you know, my five favorite restaurants in St. Louis, okay? I've already defined most of my video because I'm going to have five restaurants I want to list out. And then the idea here is you don't necessarily want to go into a ton of depth on each one. You just want to give me maybe one to three sentences on each particular thing. So I might say, hey, I'm going to share my five favorite restaurants in St. Louis with you. Let's go. Number one is, uh, you know, Joy is on the Hill. It's an amazing sandwich shop. It's been in business for a hundred years. Get the hot salami. You will not regret it. It's an amazing sandwich. Number two, you know, and just go from there, right? 
So you probably don't need a script. You really just need the bullet points. This can be used in an educational format, can be used uh, from an entertaining format, but it's a very simple video to make. Um, probably should have switched to the slide a second ago as we were talking about how to make it. Um, but you just want to come up with a couple particular points you can make on that topic, right? So ask your audience even. If you don't know what they're going to want to hear, that's a really simple things you can do. Um, two formats that I like a lot that are really about avoiding pain are three things, and you can change the number, but three things I wish I had known, right? So I made some mistakes. That kind of implies like, man, I, I screwed up. I wish I'd known these things before I went down this path. That's a really great format. Another is just three mistakes, right? So three mistakes I made when, when buying my first house, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you those three mistakes and then give you some ideas on how to avoid them, right? Again, you don't need a script, an outline is plenty. And then if you wanna take this to the next level, the whole point of this is that these are super simple, right? So if you wanna take it to the next level, this is not required, you can add B-roll and graphics and images and all that kind of stuff, right? The easiest form of that that's gonna make this, this video a lot punchier is just to add a text-based graphic for each of the points that you make, right? So again, back to that restaurant example, I could add a text graphic with just the name of the restaurant, I could add the logo from the restaurant on the screen. I could add a picture of the front of the restaurant, whatever it might be. Those are a few things you can do to kind of make this just a little bit more engaging. But realistically, this format is great because it's also going to encourage engagement, right? Here's one of the easiest things you can do to get more engagement is ask people what you missed, all right? So say, hey, here's my five favorite restaurants on the hill. Let me know which ones I missed, right? Everybody's going to chime in. Oh, you know, you didn't talk about this one. I love this place or I go to this place all the time. It's going to start conversations. And ultimately, video is great in terms of just getting attention for your business, getting in front of people, but it's even better to build relationships. And so the ultimate goal of your videos should always be to get from the passive viewing, right? So somebody's just watching you and they're just sort of hovering in the background, taking that to the next level and getting them to say something to you. That is in a lot of ways, the beginning of the relationship, right? Because now they've engaged with you. Now they've said something. Now you can reach out and friend them or follow them, right? Now you can send them some DMs to, to continue the conversation. And the more of a conversation you can have, the more people you're gonna pull into your funnel, okay? So anything you can do to encourage that engagement is highly recommended. Last thing I'll, I'll mention here on this very first format is just where can you use it, right? So this one is very versatile. This is a format, this sort of listicle format can be used on all kinds of different social platforms. It can be used in your email. Um, it can be used on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, pretty much all of them. The one thing I will say is that if you're gonna do something like this on YouTube, that's where you probably wanna go longer, right? It's a, it's a great top format there, but you're gonna wanna elaborate on each of those points a little bit longer, right? You're gonna include a few more details, uh, maybe a couple of additional shots. And that is one reason that we recommend getting to YouTube probably at a later time um, once you've really sort of developed your on-camera skills a little bit, right? Cool. So that's format number one. Let's move on to format number two. And I know, Jeff, this is one that uh, you incorporated recently. Um, so I want to I kind of get your input on this one, but that's a time-lapse video. And this is the only thing that's hard about time-lapse videos, in my experience, is just remembering to start the recording. Because um, once you're done with whatever it is you were going to record, you can't obviously make it up. So what is a time lapse? It's a high speed short video that shows something happening, right? So what are some examples? Um, you've probably seen some really cool time lapse videos of like buildings being constructed, um, projects being completed. The way I always think about this is that anytime there's going to be a, su a substantial difference, visually speaking, between the beginning and the end of what you're doing, you should record it, right? Because you can make a, a super easy time-lapse video. So Jeff, I know you've done a few of these um, that I can think of off the top of my head. What are, what are some of your favorite things to create time-lapses around? Yeah, the thing I like about time-lapse is because you can basically make content out of anything. And so uh, I did once where my wife and I were hanging pictures in a room because there's no effort set up a tripod, set up your camera, press play and go about your business. And then when you're done, a 30 minute, you know, uh, event will be broken down into like a minute or two minutes of time lapse, which is really cool. Uh, I set up one day, uh, my neighbors across the street were having sod put in their yard and they have a really, it's, I live in a subdivision with big lots. And I literally walked outside, put my, my uh, tripod up, put the camera up and time lapse the entire day. I just had to 
plug in my phone from time to time and charge it. But it was kind of fun. And it, it just made interesting content. It took very little effort out of, out of my, uh, on my own. And surprisingly, the dumbest ideas for content, like hanging pictures on a wall or, um, you know, watching your neighbors put sod in their yard, it turns into actually somewhat interesting content that actually gets engagement. It was, it's really fascinating. It was, it was kind of fun. And like people like my neighbors were sharing the post. So I was just broadening my audience just because I had the presence of mind to, you know, turn my camera on basically. Yeah. And I love, I love that because it takes it kind of that extra step, which is, you know, you're getting your community involved in it, right? So I, I hadn't even really thought about that, but, but trying to find things that are happening in the neighborhood and then just documenting them. I mean, that that's super easy, right? So, I mean, I'm, I'm just sort of brainstorming now. I'm just thinking like next time, you know, a new business is built, uh, you probably can't record the whole time the building's being constructed because you'd have to leave your, your phone out there for a couple months more than likely. But uh, even just one day of activity, documenting that, you know, they're, they're putting the roof on or something. I mean, capturing that. Um, anything that people are going to see and recognize is going to be huge. They're going to be much more likely um, to engage in any, and share it. There. Nick, any home projects, you know, right. painting a room, uh, finishing, you know, finishing a room. Do yeah, you know, you guys did it with your fence when you were staining a fence. I mean, really, any project that you're doing at your home. If you're truly in the game to create content, to create more engagement, this is the kind of simplistic ideas that a lot of people don't even realize they have at their disposal. And that's just using the time lapse on your camera. Yeah, so easy, right? Well, so let's talk about how you do it. Um, this is actually going to be one of the easier formats. And what we're going to do here is you're looking to go to the time lapse or hyperlapse setting in your phone. All right. Now, if you're on the iPhone, um, I think it just has like one generic setting. I'm not sure how much you can adjust it, but it is pretty well dialed in for most of these kinds of videos. If you're on an Android device, at least on my phone, I can change um, how fast it's recording. So you want to go with probably at least a 16x, if not 32x, right? So what does that mean? It's 16 times normal speed or 32 times the normal speed, right? So um, a half an hour would only take one minute worth of video if you're at that 32x mark, all right? And again, you can go faster, you can go slower if you want to. Um, but what's happening when these videos are being made is that your phone is only taking a picture um, like one sixteenth as many times or one thirty second as many times, right? So for instance, it might be taking one or two pictures every second instead of taking 30 pictures every second, right? And so what that means is that you can't really slow these back down and have it look like a normal video. So if you're going to have to decide between speeds, I would go with a, a lower speed. So like I would go with 16 instead of 32 because you can always speed it up. You can compress the video to make it faster, but you're not going to have a good video when you slow it down, right? Um, and then from there, it, the other thing I will mention is you just have to think about the framing of the video, right? So when you set the shot, the shot really isn't going to change. There are some gimbals that are really cool to actually allow you to make the time lapse move and they'll actually really slowly move the camera. That's not what we're talking about. That's too advanced. So you just got to make sure that whatever you want to capture is in the frame when you start, right? It's very easy to start recording and then move down the wall. Like, like just said, if you're hanging you know, pictures, for example, and all of a sudden you're not in the video anymore and you know, you lose the, the action. So just make sure you set the shot smart. And, and then if you need to move the camera as you're going, that's fine too. I, I did a, we painted our, a, one of our rooms in our house and I just moved the camera around a couple of times to get me from a couple of different angles and it worked out just fine, right? This is one where I do highly recommend a tripod. You can set your phone up, sort of like wedge it against a wall or something like that. Um, but this is one where I think a tripod would come in really handy. And there's actually a, a picture here. And I think Tristan, I think you have uh, one of these, or I think I've seen you use one of these before. Um, these sort of flexi tripods that you can kind of wrap around things. Is it, is it called like a gorilla pod or something? Or how do those work? Dude, it's a, it's a gorilla pod pro. I've got about four of them. And they all come okay. in different sizes. I use them often. I just used one yesterday. So we use one for our DSLR. We use one for our iPhone, which I have in front of me, two different ones. Uh, we use it for the different types of phones. I don't have an Android, Nick, so I don't use it for an Android, but I use it for an iPhone. Oh, okay. I just want to <laughs> I heard I heard they don't work with Androids. Like you they know, might not, not compatible, right? They might not. I mean Clubhouse <laughs> only works for iPhone, so there is that. I know that. I know that. Yeah, I got uh, a but those I got are, Vanessa's those old handy. iPhone. Those are very handy because you can put them off the edge of a chair, on a tree, on your door, for your car, anywhere, because it wraps around 
very useful. Yeah, I think some of them even have like magnet feed in them, right? So you can just like attach it to like light posts and stuff like that. Yeah, very true. Very cool. So, so that's a great tool. So if you're going to be doing a live, uh, sorry, a time-lapse video, some sort of tripod, you know, even just a basic tripod is going to be important because since the video is so long, there is a good chance if you just sort of set your phone up against something, it is going to slide, it is going to move, and eventually it's not going to be getting that shot anymore. Um, one sort of bonus tip here, and again, we're trying to give you the most basic version and then give you maybe one or two things you could do to spr spruce it up a little, but the bonus tip would just be to slow down strategic spots. So if you have certain spots where something a little bit more exciting happened, um, that might be worth going into the editing software and slowing down a little bit. It's going to look choppy, right? Because it's, it's not going to be completely smooth, but it's going to allow you to highlight more important sort of uh, things that happen, right? So for instance, um, you know, we were, we did one of these when I put the, the lights and all the, all the ornaments are actually the setting up the entire Christmas tree because we have a fake tree. And uh, at one point I like held up a bunch of lights and I was, I was faking, right? But I kind of pretended like I was getting all tangled up in the lights, you know, because it's a big mess. And so I went back and I slowed that part down so people could see what was happening. Um, Cause otherwise I would have just like been, you know, flitting around for half a second with the lights and they wouldn't have noticed it. So that's one little extra thing you can do. And then in terms of where you want to use these, um, again, this is one that's pretty versatile. I don't think it's a, it's going to fit into sending it by email nearly as often. So that's probably not a good fit. And then you could share these on LinkedIn, depending what it is that you're doing, but this is more of a personalized piece of content, right? So Facebook, uh, Instagram, and TikTok are going to be the big places where you can use the time-lapse video. And then if it's short enough, you could also put this into stories. Um, in fact, a great way to repurpose this content would be to take the time-lapse, let's say it's a minute or so long, and then shrink it down to 15 seconds, which would make it four times as fast, and put that out as a story, right? So now you've got uh, it's the same piece of content. All it was was you sped, you sped it up even more, but now you got something you can share in your stories and you got something you can post uh, you know, anywhere else and they look a little bit different, right? So people are going to feel like they're having a slightly different experience. Nick, uh -huh. question for you. What's the phone number and the text message that we need to text to get the information again? Could you dictate yeah. that, please? Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be so. so you want to so to send to get all of our video lessons. We have we've got literally dozens of short little video lessons that range from about sixty seconds to about seven minutes. I think is the longest one that are gonna teach you all kinds of things about making video, distributing video, marketing yourself with video. Here's what you want to do: send a text message to the phone number four four two two two. So it's not a normal number; it's just five digits four four two two two. And then the body of the text message should just say L E A R N V I D E O. So no spaces, just learn video, but just as one solid word. All right. What will happen is it's going to reply and say, "What's your email address?" You give it your email address, and then you're signed up for our list. All right, moving on to three. Hey, one, one more idea, more, Nick, that yeah, I was just I was just thinking of too is is you guys could do this at events. So you go to a real estate event, you're hosting yeah. a real estate event, set up a second phone in the corner of the room and watch the room fill up. Be kind of fun. I love it. Yeah, great idea. So I uh, just want to chime in real quick for a second here. Remind everybody, uh, we are sharing this this webinar currently on both Clubhouse and uh, Facebook Live, I guess, and Zoom. So we're technically showing up in three places right now. If you're joining us on Clubhouse, this is experimental. It's the first time we did it. We really appreciate you being here. What we're going to do is at about 10 till when the webinar version wraps up, we are going to hop over to Clubhouse to answer questions. So if you've joined us on Clubhouse and uh, you're, you're you know, just, just dying to ask a question at this point, give us a few more minutes. We're going to hop on over there. And if you're here on the Zoom and you do have a Clubhouse account and you want to hop over there to do a little Q&A with us after the webinar ends, we're going to give you the link to join us there as well. So if you're here with us on Clubhouse right now, we really appreciate you being with us. Um, if you're confused as to why it's showing Vanessa as the only person speaking this whole time, it's because we're just sharing the audio from the webinar through her account. So I apologize for that confusion, um, but hopefully that clears things up and we really do appreciate you joining us today. All right. Let's talk about video number three. Go ahead. Really quick. Somebody uh -huh. asked, what's the clubhouse name? It's Lab Code Agents, colon, five, uh, what was it? Five easiest video formats that get engagement. That's the name. There you go. And like I said, I will share a link to that uh, when the webinar is done. So if you're here on the webinar with us, you know, you'll be able to join us as well. Number three, unboxing videos. The other one, the other kind of name I would say for this would be reveal videos, right? 
again, that it's funny. Like, and this is something, you know, Jeff and I talk a lot about is just like how simple some of the most engaging videos ultimately are, right? I mean, they, these are such easy things to do. So literally anytime you get a package in the mail, it could be an Amazon box. It doesn't have to be a present or anything. It just needs to be something that you can open. You could literally fake this. You could just find a box, put something inside of it and say, oh, we want to see what's inside the box. It's just the curiosity, right? I mean, people, it's just that FOMO. They kind of, they just get that natural sense of like, yeah, I want to know what's inside of that box. So what'd you get, right? So here's the thing. This is this is a very much an anticipation video. The way it works is you just literally start the, the video. You tell people that you've got something here. You're excited to show them what it is. I would probably suggest not telling them what's in the box right at the beginning because the whole point is to build the anticipation and then you know just hype it up a little talk about you know why you're excited to share it with them you know without revealing it maybe give them a couple hints um, I've had people guessing I've done live videos like this and they're kind of in the chat like guessing what's in the box um, and then you reveal it and then what I would recommend you do is just spend a little time talking about the product that you're revealing right so don't just say here it is and then turn off the video maybe you could take a couple more minutes to explain you know why you got the product or or why you're excited about it, or if you didn't know what it was until you got it out, then take it out, mess around with it a little bit. Um, very easy content, right? So again, you don't, it doesn't have to be a gift. It doesn't have to be something super innovative. Um, it's just that anticipation factor that really gets you some good engagement here. So Jeff, I know you did one of these the other day um, that it, part of it was a time lapse, but you, you got like a whole pack, like five or six boxes. It looked like, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you did there? I just did one today too, by the way. I do them in Reels and TikTok and all kinds of stuff. But I mean, because of COVID, well, even pre-COVID, but even more so with COVID, I get boxes literally every single day. And so every once in a while, I'll just create a video out of it. But I was going to mention that I, so you guys have all heard of man crates, or if you haven't heard of it, you should check it out. It's a great gift idea. But the idea behind the man crate is, is when you send it to somebody, it's really hard to open. Like they send you with a small crowbar. And so <laughs> you're really... I don't know that this is necessarily by design by man crate, but it's become that way socially that you should video yourself opening the box. And so I thought I'm going to have some fun with this. I'm going to go ahead and I set up two cameras. So I carry an extra cell phone for that reason, literally for time lapse, for uh, a side angle. It's just a phone that has no uh, cell service. It's I just use it in Wi-Fi, and um, I use it as a second camera. And so I set up one camera to do time lapse set up one camera to talk to it, to talk through the box opening, like, like you mentioned. And, um, and then I edited them together in Viva video. So I just did kind of some combos of me talking and then would break it up with the time-lapse portion of it and just kind of had some fun with it. That's just me. That if, if, you, if you follow me, that was on Christmas day. Uh, I wasn't spending any time with family this year because of COVID. So I had some time on my hands. So I had some fun and, and made a video. It was, that's all there was to it. But you know, I got a, I got a package this morning from our new office that we, you know, we just opened an office in California and they sent us some avocados. It's kind of an inside joke, but mm -hmm. I made a reel out of it. And so it, just little stupid things like that help fill my, my content coffer, if you will. And box openings are great because everybody's interested, like what's in the box. And so, uh, yeah, I do it all the time. Love it. Yeah. So easy hey, to do, right? I want to add something really quick, Nick, on yeah. that, how to make it or the delivery gift. So I just ordered a baby Yoda painting from <laughs> a TikTok artist because I'm I'm on TikTok <laughs> at night. I'm like, and and they send a lot of art because my my daughter uses my TikTok to look at a lot of art because she loves drawing. So I get this British guy who's drawing amazing Yoda and Star Wars and Marvel comics. Dude, you would love him. They check check him out, James Hans. But anyways, I go in and I comment on a Baby Yoda one. And he's like, yeah, I only make one of each. And I sell the original. And then I sell the prints after. I was like, dude, well, I want the one you're working on right now with Baby Yoda and the little ball and the Mandalorian asking it back for it. So we go back and forth. I order one from him on original. And when I get it, I'm like, you know what? Let's do a TikTok on this. So I break out the phone, I do a quick TikTok, 45 seconds, and it gets 100,000 views with 10,000 oh. likes. Hmm. And that was what it took me a minute to do. And then I decided to copy it and put it on Reels, and it gets 20,000 views on Reels. So really wow. good. Boom. Yeah. I was going to say, if you weren't sold on these at, the, at that point, you should be now, right? Um, and that's taking it a step further. You know, you, you're riding a trend, you're culturally relevant, you're showing art. I love it. So many layers to it. 
Um, let's see. Last thing we want to mention on this one is just kind of where can you use this? How can you use it? Again, pretty versatile video. Um, you'll see this on YouTube. I actually think the number one top paid YouTuber is like a 12 year old kid that's been doing unboxing videos and gift reviews for years. So there you go, right? I mean, that should be convincing enough, but it works on Facebook. It works on, uh, on a TikTok or Instagram as well. And if you need to cut it down and use some jump cuts to, to kind of compress it to fit on TikTok, um, that's a great thing that you can do with it as well. All right, moving on to number four here. Number four is to tell an emotional story, right? Now this one, in terms of editing, in terms of production quality, zilch, you don't need anything, right? It's all about the story in this case. Now I've heard this before, you know, oh, you want to talk about stories, you know, marketers are always telling, talking about stories and using it as kind of a buzzy term. Um, and that's fine, right? But in this case, we're trying to tell something that people are going to identify with, right? Now it doesn't, you know, we say emotional story, emotions have a large range, right? So it could be a funny story, it could make you happy, it can make you sad. Uh, one of my favorites is a rant video. So being literally like sort of angry and frustrated and, uh, you know, ranting about it. So I'll give you a quick example. Um, I did a video at one point talking about how I can't stand when people are like massively late to meetings and they don't tell you ahead of, you know, they don't let you know they're running late um, or they just completely blow you off and you're sitting there in a coffee shop for an hour, not knowing where they are and you can't get a hold of them. <coughs> Tristan. You know? <laughs> I'm not, I, I, there wasn't, I wasn't going there. I just, Jeff took it there, but, uh, but you know, I, I made this video and People like, you know, it was funny, like I got a lot of engagement on it and I, you know, I have no idea if it was actually related, but I actually had less of that happen to me after that point. Um, so maybe the culprits uh, saw my video and, you know, shaped up at that point. I think it was before I met you, Tristan. So I don't think you fall into the, in any of that category. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Jeff. Yeah. Damn it. Right. So anyway, that one's a simple one. So that's an example is a rant video. Um, I think talking about causes you're passionate about. I mean, any, any time of the day, any time of the year, talking about a, a nonprofit or, or a charity or something that you support, it's always going to perform well. I mean, that pulls on people's heartstrings. They're going to have their own version of the same thing. Even if they don't support the same causes you do, they have their cause and they're going to feel an emotional connection um, to the fact that you are doing this, right? So let me give you a couple tips uh, on how to do this. And then I'll see if Jeff and Tristan have any examples they want to share. Um, make it feel and, and look personal and genuine. I would not put a lot of production into this. In fact, this should be almost intentionally uh, sort of low budget selfie style video, you know, even the video kind of shaking around a little bit. I mean, it's going to make it feel that much more real. Um, one example we see a lot is people doing these in their cars. Do not drive while making videos, okay? This is a major like pet peeve of mine. Um, I cannot believe people drive around and also make videos at the same time. If you're a passenger, it's fine, right? But if you're driving the car, do not record yourself. That being said, the car is still a great environment for a video because it's, it's basically soundproof. It's very quiet. It's an intimate space. Um, and so if you want to sit in your car and record this, that is something I see a lot of people do. Um, be honest. Don't rehearse it much. You know, if you get emotional while you're telling the story, it might feel a little bit embarrassing, but that your video will perform substantially better. You know, whenever we're showing um, emotion and vulnerability, uh, we're going to get some good results. And then another kind of advice uh, tip here would just be go live, right? Your video might end up being fairly long, but you're going to have a chance to interact with people, right? It's going to feel very organic. It's the kind of thing that, that people get pulled into and then they stick around and they want to watch the whole thing because they want to see how the story resolved. So if you're going live on Facebook, um, you know, three to seven minutes is a decent range to shoot for. When you get beyond seven minutes at that point, maybe you're into a conversation with somebody, um, but your story should be wrapped up in that amount of time. Um, if you're doing something for YouTube, maybe you can go a little bit longer, although you're going to probably want to add some sort of additional elements to it. Um, but again, these are meant to be really simple, which is why I love live video, because live video is never expected to be polished, right? There are ways to do live video in a really polished format, but live video is not expected to be polished. And so that's a great place to do it. So Jeff, Tristan, you guys have any yeah. examples of this kind of video? You know, the, the, I'll give you the perfect example was COVID. Uh, mm. When I when I got COVID, which was back in August, um, it was less mainstream then. Uh, in other words, it wasn't, uh, you know, I, I was one of the newbies in my market, in my uh, city. It wasn't as hip, years. Jeff? It wasn't, as, it wasn't as hip? It wasn't as hip as it is today, correct. Uh, but 
I decided and my wife, you know, my wife did not agree with me, but I'm like, you know what, I'm going to share this experience. And that was in the beginning, I was quarantined to my room and it really sucked. And so I really, I shared, I got very, very authentic with it and uh, shared the experience. I mean, I, and I felt like crap too. So I was literally sharing videos, laying in bed. Maybe, maybe that's over the top for some, but it worked in the sense that people loved it. And, and I thought it would not necessarily for the engagement so much as it was really just letting the world know like, Hey, what's your, what's the experience like? And I still get comments and engagement on those videos, namely more on TikTok than anything, but they're still performing. And then I went and got an antibody test and that thing has performed really well. So it's like, it's almost like I've become the source for people to, to check in on to see, okay, I have a question about COVID. I'm going to go follow Jeff and see what he has to say about it because he's going to share. Love it. Yep. Super simple. Something everybody's experiencing, obviously going to drive a lot of interest uh, when you're talking about stuff that's, that's that you know common and popular, right? So great example. All right. We are on to number five. I do want to chime in one more time for those of you that are here with us on Clubhouse. Thank you so much for joining us. This is experimental. I think it's going decently well. Um, we are sharing the audio from our Lab Code Agents Business Video School webinar this week, and we are going to be answering questions at 10 till. So if you're with us uh, on Clubhouse, we're going to bring some people up to the stage and answer some questions for you um, at that point in time. Thanks so much for being here with us. Number five is we're going we're gonna to call these short nonverbal videos, right? Now, when we say nonverbal, here, here's what we're getting at is that, um, and we have an example, if we have time, we'll show, but hopefully Jeff can just tell us about it. And that is you, you, whenever you talk in a video, you add complexity, all right? So anytime you have to say anything, you're gonna think harder about the video you're making. If you just simply grab some clips and you put them together and, and you can narrate it later if you want to, or you just add some music just to spruce it up a little bit, these are gonna, these are gonna be very easy to make in that sense, right? So um, there's an example of a video and maybe I'll pull it up and, and show it, Jeff, while you're talking about it, where I think you were down at the lake and you were winterizing um, your boat. Does that sound familiar? I know you have a lot of TikToks out there. Yeah. So yeah. I was going to pull that one up on the screen here. And why don't you just tell us um, kind of what you were thinking in terms of why you decided to make this one. And let me pull it up and then you can, you can talk about it. Turn the music off there. Go ahead. Well, I mean, TikTok's obviously, I think TikTok has made this mainstream. It's so easy to do like the whole uh, with music and you guys just pointing uh, to it because you can talk through text because it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a platform where you can change the duration of how long things are on the screen. You can kind of get creative. So uh, I, I, I love it for that feature. Personally, Nick, I don't think this just should be nonverbal necessarily. I think the important the important piece of this is the short form more than anything. Um, but as you can see here, what you're watching on the screen, if you're watching it, if you're in Clubhouse, uh, literally, it was just it was our last boat ride of of the uh, summer, I guess the fall, and then uh, it was it was me winterizing. I actually did another video, follow up video of us actually winterizing the boat and covering it, which was kind of like a time lapse, but not really a time lapse. I just did it in increments, basically. Uh, but, you know, very, very simple. This, I, I think most of you are pretty familiar with this at this point. And if you are deathly afraid of the camera, this is another great way to get yourself comfortable if you don't like talking, uh, because it's mm -hmm. such an easy way to create content that's engaging, that's fun, that's interesting. And if you just learn a couple of editing skills within TikTok, for example, you could do this on Reels too, but TikTok's editing platform is 10x more robust than reels uh, but you know again depends on what platform you're on so my, i'm just partial to tiktok but i love it i love i love the short form piece of it i love there's this there's this second bullet point here which nick i'll mention which is jump cuts and anybody's heard me talking about video or anybody asks me like what's one tip you would give about video going forward in 2021 and, and jump cuts is my answer is is that's the newest mainstream editing feature in videos. If you watch YouTubers, you watch YouTube influencers, uh, jump cutting is very, very popular in the videos. And TikTok and Reels have made it super simple to jump cut. So you don't necessarily have to have editing skills per se, because if you're familiar with Reels or TikTok, for example, you literally can hold the button for five seconds, say or show whatever you're doing, stop, 
push it again, start again, and that's your jump cut. So each cut in between scenes is considered a jump cut and YouTubers have made it very popular. I think it's because it's visually stimulating. Uh, we're so used to seeing talking heads and people just talking continuously for a minute, two, three, 10 minutes of vomiting that the visual stimulation of a jump cut keeps people engaged in the videos. And again, there's no better place to kind of stay hip to what, you, what, what and where you should be going with video than YouTube because YouTubers are basically the trendsetters. And, um, and, you know, TikTok and Reels has just made it super easy to execute that. And then on top of that, one thing I tell people is, well, actually two things. One, if I talk about a topic, let's just say it's business related, anything. And I just, I schedule it. I go live. I talk to my camera. I'm probably going to vomit for two to three minutes when it's a topic that could very easily have been condensed into less than 60 seconds. If I just really dialed in and focused and, and had it and, and had it kind of uh, concise and, and TikTok and reels force you to do that. It actually makes it easier to script and talk through videos because, because since you have to be sub 60 seconds and you can do them in jump cuts, you can literally shoot the video one line at a time. So therefore you don't have to read a script. You don't have to have a teleprompter. You just memorize the line, press play, say it, stop. Go to your next line, memorize it for a second, press play, say it, stop. And that's creating the jump cuts. It's making it easier to execute. It's giving you everything that you could possibly want to actually take a verbal video that may have been monotonous in the old world, quote unquote, old world, like six months ago old, and mm -hmm. make it far more engaging. And you're more likely to get your audience to click and, and watch. Love it. All right. Well, there you go, folks. That's the five formats that we want to share with you today. Uh, we do have a couple more things for you before we wrap up. So please stick around for us. But hopefully... You got some value there. And what I'd recommend is pick one of those five formats you just heard about and make one today, right? It is always better to just implement immediately whenever you learn something new. So we give you five simple, simple formats. Um, grab one of them, make a video right now uh, as you hop off of this webinar here in a few minutes. Now, before we wrap up, I do want to spend a couple of minutes talking about something brand new from Business Video School that we've been getting a lot of questions about over the past few weeks. And that is, our real estate video roadmap, right? So let me just kind of give you a quick overview of what this is and why we decided to do it. So we have been working for years now with a whole bunch of real estate agents, hundreds and hundreds of agents, you know, both in St. Louis where we got started and now all across uh, the United States, even a few people in other countries. And what we found as the common thread amongst all of them is that what they're ultimately trying to do when they come to us and say, I wanna to learn to use video, is they wanna build a scalable local brand that consistently attracts new business, right? And obviously we use video as the tool to do that. So if, you know, if that's not what you're all ultimately aiming for, let me know in the chat, but I'm assuming that that is what you're aiming for, right? And so what I wanna do next is I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, kind of what it is that you're doing to get there. And I think this is a question that you really have to be asking yourself. now. What I'm going to, oh, I hit the wrong button here. I'm going to send a, a link in the chat right now because I do know uh, a few of you probably got to get running here in a few minutes. But if you do want to learn more about Business Video School or this roadmap, you just need to go to biz, B-I-Z, videoschool.com slash enroll. I'm going to put that in the chat right now so that some of you can go check that out um, while we're, we're uh, talking about the roadmap here. Uh, again, that's bizvideoschool.com slash enroll. And so what you're ultimately got to ask yourself is kind of what are you planning to do about video in 2021, right? What is your month to month plan? What is the system that you're going to implement, right? This is an incredibly complex tool. It's an incredibly powerful tool. What are you actually going to do to make it a part of your business? And so there's a lot of things that you got to figure out. If you're new to video, which is fine, that's usually who we work with. But if you're new to video, you're going to have to learn how to plan and script videos. You're going to have to learn how to film videos, even with just a phone, right? Maybe eventually a nicer camera if you get to that point. You're going to have to learn how to control your, your lighting and audio. You're going to have to learn how to edit videos, how to distribute your videos correctly, how to be compelling on camera, which is a whole different set of skills, right? How to be really good in front of a camera. And then ultimately, you got to create a video strategy. And then there's a whole bunch of other things that we just really don't have time to list, right? So you got to have a plan for this. And the one thing I want you to think about is when did you decide that you should probably be doing video? Was it three weeks ago? Was it two years ago? For most people we talk to, it's probably three or more years ago. I'd heard enough about video. I knew I should be doing it. I just kept dragging my feet, right? 
So what I want to do, and this is going to be this is going to be a quick overview, but what I want to do is just show you some of the things that our students learn in the first four months, right? So when you work with Business Video School, what can you expect to learn in the four, in the first four months? And I want you to compare this for a second to how much you've learned about video in the past four months, all right? So kind of compare and contrast here uh, what it looks like when you're a student with us versus when you're trying to figure this out on your own. Month number one is all about understanding the basics of making video with a phone, right? Before we talk strategy, before we talk about editing anything, before we talk about building your on-camera skills, if you cannot shoot a basic video with a phone that you're at least a little bit proud of, you don't need to move on from there yet, okay? So some of the things that we're gonna cover in that first month is the psychology behind video communication and how to use it. Things like you know the basic controls for filming video with a smartphone. How do you adjust the resolution, the frame rate? Um, how do you adjust the focus? What about the brightness, right? There's a whole bunch of small little settings that don't take that long to learn, but if you skip past those things and you try to go tackle a much more complex project, you're going to get frustrated, right? We're going to teach you things like how to choose video topics that get a ton of engagement. You got a little sample of that today. Um, things like we talk about listicle videos. Obviously, we go into more depth uh, when we're inside of the school. We talk about how to send one-to-one -one video messages, how to send a personalized uh, birthday message, for instance, to somebody, right? There's all kinds of different ways to utilize video. And so we spend the first month just focusing on learning how to shoot a very simple video with a phone, right? Now you might say, oh, well, a whole month, that seems like a lot, but here's the thing. Every single week we're making a video. We're making something that if you want, you could post on social media. You could put out there in front of other people and start using to grow your business, right? So from there, we're gonna move on to month two. And at this point, this is where we start to learn how to do basic editing and how to use equipment, right? So you're gonna learn how to set up an in-home or an in-office studio. You're gonna learn how to uh, use compelling backgrounds for your videos. So things that you can put behind yourself um, to make yourself look really good. You're going to uh, learn how to use equipment for on-site video shoots. You're gonna learn a whole bunch of stuff about equipment. You're also gonna learn how to edit, right? And I think that's really important is if you don't know how to edit your videos, you're probably not gonna make the most exciting potential video, right? So that's really important to figure out is how to edit and how to use your equipment. That's what we cover in month two. Moving on to destination number three, this is month number three. This is where you're gonna learn how to be compelling on camera. This is all the on-camera skills, right? So this is stuff like um, you need to be learning, you know, how to use voice inflection. So a lot of people are very monotone when they first start making videos. It's all just one steady tone and it's not very exciting to listen to. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about creating a compelling hook for your videos, right? how to use uh, settings and props and things like that to get people excited about watching the rest of your content. And then month four, this is where we do something that I think is one of the most important things you can ever do with video. And that is to go in and replace yourself with video, right? So to take video and replace some of the repetitive things that you're currently doing. So this is gonna be where we talk about how to um, talk to, you know, how to answer frequently asked questions. What are those questions that you're getting on a regular basis that you can make a video in response to that now you can share anytime you run into a situation where someone has that question? It's gonna save you time. It's gonna make you look more professional. And so what I love about this is that once you're four months in with Business Video School, and again, if you wanna to try to go out and do this on your own, you're more than welcome to, but we have a very structured system. Once you're four months in, you have all of your essentials. And not only do you know how to make a good video at that point, you actually also have replaced some of your time. You've saved yourself time moving forward, which means everything you do at that point moving forward is free, right? Think about it that way. All that time you're spending to continue learning more about video, because this doesn't end after four months, at that point, you have re you've released that time from your schedule by being more efficient with your business. And then you can invest into these later stages, right? So I'm not gonna go into depth. I'm just giving you a quick overview today, but stage two is how to build your social media video content strategy. We're gonna help you build out an entire strategy for whatever social platforms it is that you wanna focus on. And then stage three is to implement your video marketing funnel, right? At that point, we're getting high, we're getting deep into these topics, right? This is where we're building out maybe a YouTube channel where we're gonna attract a whole bunch of leads through. Maybe we're building out a Facebook strategy. At that point, you're getting a little bit more of a customized learning experience because you're able to dive into the topics that you really care about, right? So 
I want you to, at this point, you know, click that link in the chat. Again, it's bizvideoschool.com slash enroll. Um, this is going to be your opportunity to get signed up. Cohort-based learning. So let me just mention this really quickly. We work in a cohort model, which means that you take your classes with fellow students at scheduled times. People are always confused by cohort learning. It's, it's the same thing you do in school, right? So if you've ever been to grade school or high school or college, you learned in a cohort format, right? You showed up with people who are going through the same experience with you. That's what we do too. So right now, our next cohort is filled, all right? I'm going to skip ahead to pass these slides for just a second. Um, our first cohort, which is we call our blue cohort, is completely full. It starts tomorrow. So if you were here last week and you got a seat in that cohort, um, congratulations. I think we filled it up in about five, four and a half days or so. It didn't take very long. So we went ahead and opened up another one, which starts on Wednesday, January 27th at 12 p.m. Central. Okay. Again, that's 10 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 1 p.m. Eastern. That's a Wednesday. And every week at that time, you're going to show up in a dedicated Facebook group. It's a private group. Nobody who is, is outside of your class can be a part of it. So it's a very uh, intimate setting. And all you got to do is show up once a week for one hour and watch the training. And then we assign you a small homework project, right? That's it. It's really straightforward, really simple. And we found that the vast majority of our students prefer taking our classes this way because it allows them to stay consistent and accountable. Now, if you're saying, what if I want to, I'm, I'm speedy. I want to move as fast as I can, right? You can, if you want to, you can reach out and say, hey, can I, can I access some of your more advanced courses right off the bat? We'll discuss it in private. But what I encourage you to do is you should be in this cohort structure because it allows you to move at a, at a rate that we have found to be the most effective. If you wanna move faster, make more videos. That's simple, right? So instead of trying to make something much more elaborate, make five of these videos we're learning this week instead of just one, okay? If you wanna do more, that's how you do it with Business Video School because that way you're gonna practice each of the skills an appropriate amount and you're gonna learn them in the right order. That way you're getting your, your best possible education, all right? So uh, I, I know I kind of skipped over the slide. I wanted to bump back to it. It's what is the pricing? The pricing is very straightforward. It's 97 bucks a month or 970 bucks a year. We do have a lot of people that opt for the one-year membership because quite frankly, they're just being honest with themselves that they wanna give themselves enough time to learn all this stuff. If you saw earlier, we have three stages. Stage three, at that point, you've got multiple different kinds of courses you can get into. So stage three can last more than four months, but if you did all three of those stages back to back and you only took one course in stage three, you would be in the school for exactly about one year, right? I say exactly about, I mean, it might be one or two weeks off of one year, but you're gonna be in the school for one year and your one year membership will cover you working through those three stages, right? If you wanna stick around after that and spend more time with us, taking more of our stage three classes, you know, think of those as kind of your, your junior and senior level classes where you're getting uh, you know, really into the specific marketing techniques and things like that. You're more than welcome to, we would love to have you, but that is our two pricing options. So what I encourage you to do is hop on over to our website, go to bizvideoschool.com slash enroll and make sure that that is in the chat there. It looks like it is available. Go ahead and hop over into there and uh, get yourself signed up, right? You got two weeks. I think last I checked, we already had 11 or 12 people um, in the green cohort, we cap it at 50. I would imagine that by sometime, you know, by around this time next week, that cohort will probably, probably be full based on how the, the first cohort sold out in just a few days. Um, so I'm not trying to make any artificial urgency. That just is what happens. So if you do want to get enrolled, go ahead and jump over and do it. Uh, one last thing I'll mention here is that if you, uh, if you ever have to miss a class, we record, all the classes are recorded, right? So you can, you can attend the class, you can come watch it later. If you do attend live, the beauty of it is that there is an instructor present while you're watching the training and they can answer your questions, right? So you get that personalized feedback, but we also have a weekly Q&A session you can attend. There's lots of ways to get your questions answered, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I think we, we got the link in the chat already. It's again, just bizvideoschool.com slash enroll. Hop over there, check out our site, you know, research us as much as you want to, and then get yourself signed up as soon as you can. One final note is just when you go to check out, make sure that you check the box for the green cohort. You'll see what I mean when you're filling out that form. Towards the bottom, there's a box that says, hey, do you want to join the green cohort? Make sure you select that so we can save your seat in it. And again, one final reminder in terms of when it starts is January 27th, and it's going to be running at 12 p.m. Central every Wednesday from that point forward. 
You do get access to some other cool stuff when you first sign up. So by all means, get enrolled now. Do not wait because this cohort will fill up before that date gets here. Um, but we do give you a whole bunch of cool stuff when you first get signed up, which you can play around with in the, in the next two weeks while you're waiting for your cohort to start, right? All right, so that's all I got for you today. What we're going to do next is I'm going to post in the chat a link to the Clubhouse room. So I know for those that are here on the webinar with me live right now, uh, we mentioned that we did an experiment today. Uh, it was it was quite an experiment. You know, I think it went okay. <laughs> it sounds like my audio was cutting out once or twice in Clubhouse, but otherwise it went well. So I'm going to invite you to join us there where we will have more time to answer questions, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and post this link. Let me make sure I'm sharing the right thing. Sorry, let me just delete. Uh, I've got a couple links that I've saved here in my, in my computer. So let me just make sure I'm sharing just the right link with you. Oh, somehow I think I actually pasted this twice. So we're almost there. I'm going to share the link in just a second, and then you can join us over here on Clubhouse. Let me get in there, deleting, deleting, deleting. Okay, there we go. That is the link to the Clubhouse. Uh, we'll call it an after party. If you're on Clubhouse and you can join us, we would love to have you there. Um, otherwise, for those that are here, uh, we, we will see you next week, all right? So we do one of these every single week uh, on Wednesdays, and we'd love to have you again next week. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please go check out bizvideoschool.com to learn more about what we do, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much.